All right. So now I'm going to go on the assumption that you already know what corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and same side interior angles are. And what we're going to do is use parallel lines. We're going to make those two lines that we talked about last time parallel. And when that happens, and let's just say this angle 60, Things we already knew, like 1 and 4 are vertical angles, and so 4 has to be 60 degrees as well. 1 and 2 are a linear pair, so they have to be supplementary. And so 180 minus 60 is 120, and the same thing goes for number 3. Now the ones that are new now to us are that 60, angle 1 and angle 5, if you can see how that angle is going to be the same, the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. And the 60 and the 60, the alternate interior angles are going to be the same. And 60 and 60, number 1 and number 8, the alternate exterior angles are going to be congruent. And then 120 and 120, the 2 and the 6, those are corresponding. And the 2 and the 7, you can notice that all of those are going to have that relation. And so, if we know the two lines are parallel, and only if we know the two lines are parallel. Then we know by the corresponding angles postulate, again that's the thing that doesn't need to be proven, that our angles are congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent. And what I say in my, my proof, either I say corresponding angles postulate, which is the fancy way of saying it, or I remember parallel lines tell me that corresponding angles are congruent. Or I could say, sometimes I put the congruent before. So parallel lines imply corresponding, congruent corresponding angles. It's a plural angle. At least it's trying to be. Alright, alternate interior angles are congruent. Like the 120 and the 120. And the 60 and the 60. Again, parallel lines imply congruent alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles are congruent and so in a proof I might say parallel lines. If I have parallel lines then I know that alternate exterior angles are congruent. And same side interior, the same side interior like the 120 and the 60 and the 60 and the 120, we could say that they are supplementary. So, same side interior, supplementary, parallel lines, tell me, supplementary, same side interior. And why I like doing it this way is because parallel lines give me these things. And what we're going to talk about in the next deal is that the converse is true, so that if I have congruent corresponding angles, then I have parallel lines. And so I like using these because I remember if I have this, then I know this. If I know this, then I know this. And I, I can keep it straight that way and I don't assume something that I don't know. So, we're going to do this next proof. We're going to prove um, the alternate exterior angles theorem. And so in order to do that, we don't want to use the alternate exterior angles theorem. But so let's, let's suppose m is parallel to n. And we want to prove that 1 is congruent to 8. So we're looking at 1 and 8. And so I want to compare. And so one thing that we can use is the corresponding angles postulate, because that's something that we can use without, um, without saying. And so what I want to look at is, hey, 1 is congruent to angle 5. And because I know, I say one, ang one is congruent to angle 5 because of the corresponding angles postulate. Or my parallel lines imply corresponding angles. And then 5 is related to 8 because vertical angles are congruent. Or the vertical angles congruence theorem. Again, this is the fancy terminology and this is how Mr. Brazel usually writes it because he can't always think about that. And then finally, because 1 is congruent to 5 and 5 is congruent to 8, we can say 1 is congruent to 8 because of the transitive property. Or if you really like just calling it substitution, that works just fine as well. So we just proved the alter 
alternate exterior angles theorem. Let's do another one. So, let's say we know that we've got two sets of parallel lines, and we're trying to say that one is congruent to three. So when I look at this, I'm like, okay, well, one is related to two, and two is related to three, and so in that way, one is related to three, and so we just work our way through it. Well, so, first off, P is parallel to T. And so I know one is congruent to 2 because parallel lines tell me alternate exterior angles are congruent. So parallel lines tell me alternate exterior angles. And then Q is parallel to R and that tells me that 2 and 3 are related. And 2 and 3 are corresponding angles, so that's the corresponding angles theorem. Or parallel lines tell me corresponding angles are congruent. Finally, 1 is to 2, 2 is to 3, so 1 is to 3 by the transitive property. So very similar, like the last one, just trying to get used to using this, um, this reasoning in our proof. One thing you want to look out for is that you make sure that you've shown that those lines are parallel before you use the alternate exterior angles theorem. Parallel lines tell me that the alternate exterior angles are congruent. If you don't know they're parallel, you don't know they're congruent. So, looking at this, a couple problems about um, solving for x and y. And these are just basic geometry stuff now that we know that these are parallel. Reminder that we know things are parallel if we put these lines here. And so, hey, these two are parallel. So, well... 109 and y, those are vertical angles. And 109 and x, those are same side interior, and so those must be supplementary. And so, y is 109, x is 71, because 180 minus 109. And so I've got my reasoning here, vertical angles are congruent, and same side interior angles are supplementary when I have parallel lines. Next, x is a linear pair with 67, and so 180 minus 67 gives us 113. So linear pairs are supplementary is my reason there. And then 67, or sorry, x and y are our alternate exterior angles. And so x and y must be equal, so y must be 113. Because parallel lines tells me congruent alternate exterior angles. Analyzing the next picture, what do you see? Well, we've got these angles, and these angles are alternate exterior angles, so if these are parallel, those must be congruent. So you could set that equation equal to each other. Parallel lines, congruent alter alternate exterior angles, add your 9, divide by 12, and you get 12. Next. Very similar, except with alternate interior angles. You can set them equal to each other. Again, alternating sides of the line um, on the inside. So alternate interior angles is my reason on that one. 35 equals y after you divide by the 2. Next set. You've got your 94 and your 13x minus 5. Now, it's very tempting to say, oh, these are alternating, they've got to be congruent, but they're not, because they're, they are alternating, but one's on the inside and one's on the outside. So this 94 can be related to this one, or it can be related to this one, but ultimately, it's going to be same side interior, or you could do corresponding is congruent, and then these are a linear pair, however you want to do it. I ended up doing vertical angles and then same side interior. Um, so add them up, set it equal to 180 because they're supplementary. Combine your like terms, subtract the 89, divide by 13, and you get there. I don't think the algebra is what we're struggling with here. On this one, this little right angle tells us we've got a 90 degrees. 90 degree angle because it's perpendicular and this angle 
is 90 and so this angle must be 90 and these are corresponding angles because these are parallel we know that our corresponding angles are congruent and so the 2x plus 10 has to be equal to the 90 so notice sometimes they're going to be supplementary sometimes they're going to be equal be very intentional about the equation you set up all right next we've got one big one big picture and the reason I've got a lot of it written out for you now is just so that you didn't have to watch me writing all of this out because I've got a um, all my reasoning worked in here so we know that PQ is parallel to RS we know that LM is perpendicular to NK, so I've added my perpendicular sign here. I've added my parallel arrows, so I know they're parallel. And angle 1 is 48. Angle 1 is 48, so I know angle 3 must be 48, because those are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. Angle 2, well, angle 2 is a linear pair with both of those, and so 180 minus 48 is 132 and so I've got the linear pairs are congruent for my angles and then I've got my vertical angles now next we've got our parallel lines cut by the transversal and so if you can notice what we're trying to see okay angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent and angle 4 because these sorry these are corresponding angles and so this is 48 degrees and so my parallel lines imply that I have congruent corresponding angles um, next uh, you could go to angle 5 because you know this whole thing is 90 and so this has to be 42 because 4 and 5 are going to be complementary in a sense and then because these are uh, parallel if you can notice here's our transversal and you almost have to ignore this line going across because you've got angle 5 and angle 6 are another set of corresponding angles. Do you see how that makes the, the V and the V? So angle 6 is 42 as well because parallel lines tell me my corresponding angles are congruent. And finally angle 7 is 138 because these are a linear pair and linear pairs are supplementary. So that's how you use parallel lines. Make sure you're using some good reasoning skills, and if you're not using this, use the fancy corresponding angles theorem, um, or same side interior angles theorem, things like that.